Hi everyone, so welcome to my review of the Ibasso Osprey PP5, which is a portable amp. It's a tube amp, it's a portable tube amp. These have uh, cork new tubes, uh, which is you know not uncommon for DAPs and tube amps of a portable variety to be used. Uh, it is a fantastic device, but a lot of you might be wondering whether a portable amp in general is for you. And a lot of you might be wondering, what is the use case of a portable amp? What can you drive with it? And why do you need it? And does it make using this cumbersome? So I'll answer all these questions, but first I'll take you guys to a discussion on the specs. And then I'll of course talk about how I use this with my Sony WM1 ZM2 DAP or my Ibasso DX260 DAP. I have two, I have two DAPs. And uh, so I have two I Ibasso products. I really like I Ibasso, I enjoy Ibasso. I think they're one of the best uh, source manufacturers for portable audio enthusiasts coming out of China. And uh, yeah, I'll, I have the Aroma Audio Jewel in front of me, which is a $5,000 IM. I have the Campfire uh, Planar with me, the Super Moons, which is one of my favorite IMs. And of course I have the Focal Clears here. So I just wanna just give you a sense, a holistic sense of what you can drive this with, how this sounds and who this is for. Okay, to jump right in, firstly, Ibasso, like I said, is a very uh, a well-loved brand from China and they're famous for the digital audio players such as the one I have here. They also have high-end ones. I mean, this is pretty high-end but they have other higher end ones, so to speak, in the $3,000 range and above. And their dApps are well loved. A lot of people swear by their dApps and, and talk about them as if they are the best DAPs on the market. And I don't disagree with the quality of their DAPs. I have the Sony as my sort of uh, flagship, but Ibasso has released a new one, which I'm very excited about. The Sony W1ZM2 in general is a beautiful device. I mean, aesthetically, of course, but also in terms of its sound, it's a sonorous sort of a deep bass sort of a sound with you know a u-shaped sort of a flavor that pushes the mid-range uh, pulls the mid-range back upper mids a, back a bit and creates a massive sense of stage and this also has really impressive uh, stereo imaging left and right imaging well, that's a sony right and that's important because then you'll get a sense of what this sounds like in relation to with the sony's and the ibasos the ibasos in, in general are very neutral sounding fast punchy clean and overall very neutral sounding, very uncolored, right? Okay, so these are my sources. And a lot of times the my Sony DAP will not drive something like a Focal Clear very well. I mean, the Focal Clear is driven with very little amount of power. So it's not fair to say that this doesn't drive the clear very well. But I mean, sometimes I want a bit of grunt, a bit more grunt, a bit more stage and all that. And the, although the Sony is a master of stage, I, I want a bit more layering and front to back, a sort of, you know, sense of holography. Uh, the Basso is, is interestingly although smaller and, and uh, this has more power than the Sony. So this does drive headphones slightly better in that sense. But with this, I get a beautiful amount of warmth and, and timbral richness and organicness and color, which I like. So guys, with this sort of a sense, I was always someone who was very spectacle of portable amps because I thought the idea of portable was to get something like this that's pocketable. And even this is somewhat heavy. So for me, portability or inherent in the idea of portability is, you know, the, the, you know, the fact that this should be light, I should be able to pocket this, I should be, be able to take it on a walk, etc. So I never really got into portable amps until this. I mean, I've listened to other amps before. I've listened to every portable amp in the market from Aroma Audio, from Cayenne, and I've owned a few, like I've owned the Aroma Audio. I've owned uh, uh, even Aslan current portable amps and stuff, but I ended up selling most of them. Now, this is the first time I decided to keep a portable amp. And as a matter of fact, I would go as far as, as, far as to say, this was one of my highlights of CanJam Singapore 2024. I mean, it's not cheap. It's around $1,500. You, if you have an Ibasso DAP, they give you a discount and you can get this for less, especially if you have the DX300 series, I think you get a discount and you, get, you can get in touch with Paul at Ibasso. He's a really super friendly guy to confirm if what I'm saying is accurate, but you do get a discount. I think the price drops significantly if you have one of the newer Ibasso flagship tier DAPs and you get this for $1,000 instead of $1,500. Now, all that to say that this is something that is very sought after. This has been received with great uh, admiration and, and adulation. And I'll just show you the amp and what this has. This has 
This, of course, is the input. So this is basically where you connect with the DAP using one of the many interconnects they've provided. So just to give you a sense of what comes in the box, and the box is pretty nice, fairly luxurious unboxing. But the important thing is, at least I got two interconnects. So this one I got, which I really like because this interconnect is super light and ergonomic. I use this more and I've also given you, at least I got one, and I got this DAP from a dealer in Singapore, Ethan Music. I'll leave a link to Ethan Music. And I got this, which is a pretty high-end looking, premium looking interconnect. And interconnects do change up the sound. I know you might not agree if you have not, not heard it happen, but, if, but they do. And the dis uh, difference is not insignificant. So this is how it works, guys, right? So you plug your DAP like this with your portable amp. And some people will use an elastic to sort of strap these two together. You can obviously just use them like this. If you're listening, lying down in bed, for, for example, you might not want an, an elastic. And, and um, there are people who get bugged and people who have OCD and they don't like strapping these things to, to, together because then it becomes difficult to navigate the screen. But those minor quirks are things that I think overall portable audio enthusiasts have learned to overcome because they, these make a huge difference to the sound. Now, before we talk about the sound, just to very quickly talk about, and you, of course, see the, the outputs here. The, you have a 4.4 and you have a 3.5. And uh, in terms of other uh, features, you, of course, have a gain switch here and you have the power switch here. And this is what it looks like once the amp is switched on. You'll see the green cork new tubes lighting up, which looks pretty nice. And I love the fact that they've given you this very luxurious green almost Rolex green uh, leather uh, case back and, and or leather cover because it, it's, it, it just goes really well, I think, with my Sony's blue and gold. And overall, this is very picturesque shade of green. And I like green generally uh, in, in, in my luxury products. And this is, of course, a very fine and luxurious product. Guys, this has about 1.7 watts of power at 32 ohms, which is not nothing. I'll switch it off for now. Uh, 1.7 watts at 32 ohms is significant because it can drive any earphones to ear splitting levels. I just want you to know that the Sony doesn't have a proper line out. So in many ways, when I pair this with the Sony, I'm by amping, right? And it, that, that still makes a difference because you still get a significant coloration coming from the Ibasso amp. But if you wanted a proper line out, you could get something like the Ibasso DX260. And then you get a proper line out and then the volume control here doesn't work and you can control the volume of your music with this volume knob, which is a fantastic volume knob, which I really like. So this has six rechargeable batteries that provide about 10 and a half hours of backup, which I think is awesome. For portable, for portable devices, 10 hours plus is fabulous. The PB5 features two Korg new tubes, like I said, which provide a warm signature, a lovely warm signature. I talked about the outputs and finally, this is a 24 position, four section step attenuator, which is similar to the DX320 Max. And some, some people might find this feature annoying because there's slight clicks and, and the music can cut in and out when changing the volume. But I really don't mind because this is supposed to give you a noiseless, you know, a, you know, a sonic degradation free experience with this sort of an attenuator. So you get great sonics with this device. And yeah, so in terms of the output impedance, the 3.5 does has, I think, almost negligible output impedance. The 4.4 has about a 0.25 ohm output impedance, so it's very small. Okay, specs aside, now how does this sound? Firstly, if you like bass, you'd love this. I mean, some people have measured this, and a friend of mine, Af Evo, from the water cooler thread, I think has a graph somewhere for this. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, guys. Maybe it's someone else. And I'm sorry if I've gotten this wrong, but I think AF Evo has measured this. And somewhere a frequent response states that you get about three decibels more in the sub bass because of this, which is insane. And I love it for that. You get a tonally rich presentation that sounds wide and deep, and you get some fabulous mid-range with this and you get a decent amount of treble 
air and presence without this affecting the fact that it's overall a warm signature. Now, do you need this or why would you get this? So there are many reasons to get this, guys, because see, the amp section of most DAPs tend to not be as well thought out as would be the case for something like this. The DAC section, relative to the amp section, usually delivers pretty well. So if you ever tried driving a high-end speaker system from a DAP, well, you'll notice that the difference that DACs make is not significant. It's not night and day. But amps do make a whole lot of difference. So by unleashing the power of your you know, DAP by using a secondary amp, you do get more grunt. You do get more clarity even. You do get an uptick, a very clear uptick in technical performance. So these things might not matter to you if you care about portability first and foremost and you don't want to stack. However, if you don't mind stacking because you're all about getting the absolute no compromise increase in sound quality, then of course that's different. And then of course you get something like this. You can get a cheaper amp of course, but this to my mind is the best product out there that I've heard as far as portable amps go. So, in summary, what you lose out in portability because you're stacking and a bit of ergonomics, you gain in incredible sonics. And that's true, guys, across these transducers I have here. The Jewel, for example, is one of my favorite IMs, but I sometimes crave a little bit more bass from my Jewels, and this delivers because when I use whatever daps I use, right, with the PB5, the Jewel starts hitting more impactfully in the sub bass. The Jewel sound, the Jewel has great imaging to start with and great width, but the depth of sound stage gets enhanced. And I also are able to then make out certain textural information in the voice and mid range, which I really, really like. So overall, this is a fantastic pairing with the Jewel. As a matter of fact, I bought this to be used with the Jewel. The Campfire Supermoons, which are planar, also benefit greatly from this. And the planars do thrive on getting more current and more power and more grunt. And this starts to hit really hard. And the sound stage enhances again. And last but not the least, the Focal Clears, which don't need a lot of power and they sound pretty decent off my Sony w and zm 2 They sound very good, in fact. And they sound great uh, of this using the Sony in the chain or any other DAP in the chain, even the DX260, because what happens is this is ever so slightly metallic sounding in the treble, and you do get the benefit of getting very crunchy drums because of that, but sometimes voices can sound ever so slightly nasal. This takes care of that, because what this does is it just pours honey over its upper mids and treble, and this becomes, I don't wanna say smoother, but becomes more organic. The Focal Clear sounds more organic with this, while the bass gets even more enhancement on a headphone that already has supreme bass. So the experience of the Focal Clear is regardless of what DAP you're driving it with, of course, I recommend good DAPs like the DS260 at the very least, if not the Sony w and zm 2 it's a very enjoyable ride. The sound stage becomes wider, which is important for Focal headphones because they tend to not have very wide sound stages. Imaging is amazing on the Focal to start with, and that's retained, maybe ever so slightly enhanced. But the real enhancement comes in timbre, in the mid-range quality, and the bass. And not to mention the overall spaciousness in terms, in terms of the width of the sound stage. Guys, whether this is for you or not, or whether is an I mean, I think that comes down to whether an amp is for you, whether a portable amp is for you. If you don't want to get a portable amp, then that's fine. You can get a DAP and be done with that. But if you want the last amount of sonics to be squeezed out, sonic performance from your transducers, your IMs and your headphones, especially if they're not difficult to drive, this might make sense for you. Now, if an amp makes sense for you, I think this will make the most sense because this is a phenomenal sounding device. Unless you're someone who's craving for a brightish sound, this is not that sort of sound, but I doubt many of you want a brightish sound. You can always get a brightish sounding IM for the, because I think the sort of sound you pursue should be pursued in the transducer realm. However, these things, 
can be used to color the sound, the existing original sound of your transducers. And if you want to color it warm, which I think a lot of you do, because most audiophiles I meet like and equate warmth with realism and timbre, this would be a fantastic buy. I do want to say that this is not warm to the point that it's, you know, mushy or gooey. It's not warm poo, because these are cork new tubes, which I think are just the right amount of warm, the right kind of warm, which affects the mid-range, which doesn't affect the treble, which doesn't make muddy the mid-range. It's just the right kind of warmth. So that's it, guys. This is a wonderful device, and I highly recommend it. If you are curious about this and want to have, have more questions, of course, feel free to engage me in the comments, and I'd love to answer your questions, but I really love this, guys, and I strongly recommend this. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give this a like. If you follow my work or like my work, please do subscribe because subscription does help with the algorithms and it encourages me to make more content. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.